Hey, good afternoon, everybody. 307 here again. Hey, uh, we got some projects. I spent all summer in the mountains logging, so I kind of let things at the house go to the wayside. So now we're trying to catch up. As you can see up here behind me, um, I want to get all this insulated in before this winter. Um, up there, I got kind of a storage setup deal, but I'm going to mill a bunch of lumber on the mill and fill in a lot of the rest of that attic area basically up there get a bunch of stuff up off the floor here um and then i need to pour concrete in here i'm gonna do another video on on projects that are upcoming but today's video we got a project we're gonna tackle that's kind of i don't know when you prioritize stuff, everybody does a little different, but this is something I've wanted to get done and uh, it'll kind of help. In a way, it'll help. I mean, everything works the way it is right now, but um, it'll help make it a little more efficient. So let me show you what I got going on here. All right. Well, I got uh, some roller chain. There's 10 foot rolls. There's 30 feet of roller chain there. Anybody with an imagination can probably figure out where I'm going with this from that right there. Got a sprocket there. I think that's a 14 tooth. I got the weld on round hub, half inch ID. That'll fit on there, tack it on. Got a couple idler pulleys idler sprockets here that'll fit that um, some master links these are actually for another project like I said I got plenty of them coming up so you'll see that here in a little bit and then these hopefully I can take these and put them in the end of this master link here and have a tensioner adjustment on the end of this so there's the parts that we need there may be more but that's a start oh and this old boy girl there's some stuff that's going to be happening with that too so that'll be that'll be filled in at a later date but anyway let me uh show you what this stuff's for All right, for those of you that haven't guessed, and you can see I got a pretty good sized cant there. And uh, there's a bunch of one by stuff that needs resawn. Um, but anyway, for those of you that didn't guess, I'm replacing this rope system here with chain. Um, when I get started into a log, this thing slips. And yeah, you know, I can tighten the rope up and and uh, make it work better but it also binds up as it's rolling these want to this it wants to cross and so it slips every revolution it slips off and you'll lose slack and stuff so i'm going to do a direct i'm going to try doing a direct chain drive system on this so that weld on pulley is going to go on here this one's welded on this is a half inch shaft going through here. I'll have to pull that pin out, slide this out, grind this weld off here off the shaft, pull this pulley off and put the new one on. And it's got an Allen key, so it'll just clamp on that shaft. The idler pulleys will go down here. I may have to do some modifications on my little guard here. Um, we'll see how that goes. The, uh, those eye bolts will go in here on each end. Um, may have to put a i'll put a washer in front of the nut you know it'll come out to here my chain will run there up back down out to the other end so that's the project for today let's see how it goes i'll keep you informed all right here's the uh pulley out of the where the rope runs around half inch shaft there's a pin in here that holds that handle on you crank on it so we're going to grind this end off and get it to where we can uh, get this pulley off and put the other one on. So we'll get after that.
see them starting to hit the edges there. So we'll see if we got enough to knock it out of there. Sorry about that. Hey, that's hot. Don't take me long to look at a short horseshoe. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that story before, but anyway. So there's a shaft. We'll clean this end up a little bit. Um, actually, let's see. Put that through. Yeah, that might work. I'm gonna have to uh, figure out if I want it, you know, through that way or through that way. But anyway, we got that. There's a shaft on that. I need to <clears throat> I need to weld this gear on here. For now, I'm just gonna tack it, see how everything works because I may want a bigger pulley on here I doubt it uh, the bigger pulley the bigger sprocket I put on there the uh, faster the mill will run through the boards but the harder it will be to push it crank it um, this is about the smallest one I could get I think there was a 13 tooth but this is 14 tooth so this will probably work but uh let me get this tacked on here, and then uh, we'll go down and put this together, and then we'll work on the uh, idler pulleys. All right, let's see if we can make this stick. I'm just going to tack it a few places, and uh, that way if I want to change it out or do something different, I can grind this off and pull that pulley off, so... Dropping sparks down inside my shoe. All right, I think that's got that stuck. I ain't much of a welder, but you know, it, there ain't a lot of pressure on this. Yeah, it'll hold. All right, let's uh, we'll go down and figure something out and uh, show you what we got going on down there. We'll be right back. All right, so we got this shaft here that we uh, just welded that onto. It's a little warm. Well, she's just a shy bit short. And it looks like it doesn't really line up with that either, so. You know what? It's still hot. I'm going to go dump this in the horse trough. Well, I ain't doing very good with my phone today. This is the second time I've dropped it here in the last five minutes. Um, it doesn't line up too bad, but we're still going to be the same distance on the end here for getting that pin in. So, uh,
Yeah, I'm about half that hole shy of getting that pin on there. And then if I throw a washer or two on. So I'm going to have to grind this end off, clean it up, get that pulley to scoot out a little bit. Um. <clears throat> Next thing is we got to take the guard off down here, so I'll show you that. We'll figure that out and then pulleys down there. All right, so I got to take this guard off to get to these pulleys here. Um. This mill, I think it's an older model. Uh, I mean, the thing is practically brand new. I don't know how long the guy had it. Obviously, he must have had it a while, I think. Um, the, this bed section that the uh, mill is on right now, which is basically the starting section, is different. A little bit different than the other sections, which leads me to believe that the original mill had the first two sections there. And... Uh, this other side behind me behind you guys um other lt15s that i've seen uh on youtube have this spreader section here on that side this mill only has just the post that runs down basically all right we got it broke loose good old high spread can't beat them, right? Ooh, you know what? Huh. I'm gonna have to figure out how to lift this side of the mill up because I can't get that out of there. And the other issue is, do I have enough space between this upright and this brace and this aluminum rail to put my two idler pulleys. It's gonna be tight. So let me do a little uh, reconnoitering here and uh, I'll be back with you in a minute. <clears throat> All right, well, I figured it out. <laughs> it took me a minute. Um, All right, well, we got her figured out. Um, I got a bottle jack underneath this section. I was lifting up on it, I was lifting the mill up, so I couldn't figure that out, why that was. So I undid this whole rail, took all the nuts off, and was taking the bolts out. Got to looking, I couldn't get the rail to come loose, and I got to looking what was holding it, and there's a couple pins on the outside over here for transporting the mill, and they drop into the holes back here. But they were actually underneath this rail, so I had to pull those out and then I was able to jack it up. So I got this, got it out. Let's see if these idler sprockets will fit. Well, they fit. Barely. But I don't have enough threads on this side. So I need a longer bolt. And that's a 5 8. I need about half an inch more bolt. So let me see what I can come up with. I may have to run to the store and get a couple bolts or, or a bolt. Um, but that'll work. It barely clears that rail. I may have to grind some off that head, but um, we'll get her figured out. I'll be right back. All right. Well, we got those on. I went and I just pulled one of these bolts out of the upright deals with the rollers on them use the skinny nut i'm locked on with the skinny nut so we're uh, good there and uh got to dial in this handle a little more get it to where i can put that pin in and uh, we'll be rocking and rolling put some chain on here and uh get this rail bolted back in and we're we'll good to go so uh, we'll be back in a minute all right, everybody. Well, we got the uh, got that shaft to recess in there a little bit. I just had to grind the end of it off. Uh, I've got it temporarily set here. Let's see. <clears throat> it just got a little 
Allen screw in it. Oh, it's got two. Well, anyway, I only flattened one spot. But anyway, I flattened the side of that. So it goes on there. And uh, temporarily set it about right there. We'll see how it goes if I can get that handle on. If I need to move that in further, I can. I do believe this washer was on there. I think I gotta loosen that up just a little. Upside down, yep. You see it right here. Saw it here first, guys. No, I'm sure. It's happened before. It ain't first time I've done it. No more. All right. Flat spot, we're good to go there. Tighten that one up. So now we got to route some chain. Got three rolls of 30 foot chain here, or 10 foot chain, so I got 30 foot. That'll be more than plenty, but I wanted to have extra because I am going to want to eventually put an extension on this mill. This one and that sprocket. What I'm doing here, what I'm doing here is using a master link and uh, Run through the end of the chain there, like that. There you have that. So now we'll uh, join another chain together, run it down the other end. So let's see. We'll run that that way. And go backwards. It's going to pull it that way. Should work. Alright, we'll join some chain together and get it to the other end and see, what we have, see how it goes. All right, it's the uh, next day. It got dark on me last night. Out here working on the mill, trying to get the chains drive system on it. And I pretty well got it figured out. It took a little bit this morning. Um, so let me show you what I got here and what I did, just in case anybody's wanting to do this on their mill, if you have a rope drive. So my biggest my two mis well my mistake was going with size 50 chain if i was going to do this again i'd try to get down to 30 um just because it's narrower it's not as thick there's wide um 
So anyway, right here, this whole thing was too wide. So I wound up having to take the head of this bolt off, grind it off. And I mean, it's barely clear in there. The chains hit in the middle with the two sprockets here. So I had to put some spacers in there and I had like a regular washer was too narrow, but they had a spacer on here like this. Well, it was too thick. Um, it spaced me out too much. Also had to put a spacer back on this side uh, to get it away. And I mean, it's just barely rubbing or clearing the side right here. Um, the chains touch in the middle. They're, there's a little bit of flex there, so they, they do okay. The only problem is where the master links are, they hang up. Unless the two ends of the rollers are in between each other. If they go by like that, there's plenty of clearance. Then, also, as you can see, like these bolts that hold the rail on right here, they hit the chain right there. Where am I at? And right there. Um, all of these bolts were, the head of the bolt was on that side, the nut was on this side with bolts sticking out. So I had to go through and flip all the bolts around and cut the head of the bolt off, shave it off so I got some clearance there. Now, if I would have went with smaller sprockets up here, I would have cleared that. But these were the smallest sprockets they had at the store that I went to, which is the only store around that carries this kind of stuff here. But uh, I also had to take off the plate right there that goes right across this here. Um, I am going to try to find smaller sprockets to put on there. And then I can put those plates back on and everything will clear again. So anyway, um, I think I've about got it. I do have to find, let's see, I got another master link here somewhere. Right there. So I'm probably gonna grind the face of these down just a little bit. You don't wanna go too much because then you'll lose your lip that holds that on there, but. All right, well, that's got that wrapped up. Um, I do. I gotta get a battery for this thing. I mean, I can pull start it, it's no problem. It pulls on the first pull every time, but I do wanna get a battery put in it, get it running, probably change the oil, just a bunch of little stuff. But uh, um, I am gonna also try, I'm gonna get a bimetal blade and try that just to see how much better they work. Um, yeah. Well, I think we're about ready to go. So we're going to probably get milling on this cant here and resaw some of these one bys that I got with edges on them and uh, get a bunch of lumber cut. So I want to say thanks to everybody. I um, want to say thanks to uh, all the people that are subscribing to me and commenting in the comments section. I love that. I really appreciate you guys. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Be kind. Help somebody out. Give somebody a smile and a nod. Make their day. So, 307 out.